All right, well, uh, plenty of data to consider uh, for investors, but also the RBA this week. We had CPI that came in, uh, the inflation rate coming in cooler than expected for February. And also we've had job vacancies, um, which were uh, lower than expected also today. So what's that mean for the next move by the RBA, which will be considered early next week? And how's that likely to affect markets? Lachlan Meekin joining us from Go Markets. Lachlan, good to catch up with you again. <clears throat> Excuse Hi, me. So, yeah, I mentioned a bit of that data. Um, what are you seeing in the Aussie dollar at the moment in reaction to that? Well, yesterday there was the expected spike down um, on that, but um, it, it quickly retraced, Andrew. I mean, it, the market's already pricing in no chance of a, of a hike next month and, um, and, and pretty much done deal for a, for a pause. Um, so, interesting enough, the, the cash rate futures were pricing in a, a slight chance of a, of a actual cut next week, whereas um, now they're pricing in a slight chance of a, of a hike next week. So uh, Aussie dollar, yes, it, it, just a headline, you'll see it move pretty quick, but it, it retraced uh, within a couple of hours and then other market forces took over, which has really been the, the driver of the Aussie dollar. The, the RBA, yeah, you'll, you'll get occasional moves on an RBA decision or a CPI, but for a longer term move, it's, it's the, the general market forces will take over the risk on risk off, um, strengthen the US dollar, etc. So what happens next week? Um, I mean, I, I think the RBA, if, if anything, there's a chance of an upward surprise. I mean, our employment's been pretty strong. The retail sales are holding up. Um, a lot of this repricing of, of hiking by central banks to, to a pause has been based on, on the banking crisis, which it's pretty limited effect on us. So um, I think there'll be a pause next week, but I wouldn't be surprised if the statement was a little bit more hawkish and the market's pricing in. Well, we do see a bit of a bump in the Aussie dollar from there. Yeah, we were considering the last time with a hawkish pause or a, a dovish hike. It's, it's interesting, isn't yeah. it, where we're at right now? Uh, obviously, as investors, you know, looking for some positivity there at the moment. Um, Lachlan, what are you thinking of the likely trajectory of the Aussies likely to be if it in fact does pause next week. I guess you've also got to factor in where the, the US dollar is going at the moment. A lot of that dependent on where the, the Fed takes its rates. Um, plus of also, also of course, giving, given the Aussie is a, a commodity currency, that uh, what's going on in China and where we're seeing those commodity prices. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of factors that will push and pull the Aussie dollar. Um, I think probably the main one when you're talking about the Aussie US rate is, is going to be the the US dollar, the US dollar does look a bit vulnerable at the moment with a real lack of um, direction from the Fed at the moment. Um, I mean, you see it kind of going up and down and the Fed fund futures going all over the place, basically, whether a bank collapses or not. So I think um, as things calm down, unless the Fed takes back that hawkish narrative, we will probably see the, the US dollar vulnerable and weaken over the short term. That'll help the Aussie, obviously. Um, is as long as nothing comes out of the blue again, I think as things calm down, the Aussies should probably um, start heading back up slowly but surely up to that. Well, it, there's a there's a big resistance at 68, and it, it got rejected there a couple of times last week. We could see it heading up to there slowly, um, unless unless the Fed does start taking back that hawkish narrative, um, or if we do see some other real stress in the banking industry. From there, we'll have to wait until um, what the RBA does. And we've also got the PCE on the on Friday, actually, as well from the US. So if that comes well outside range, we could see uh, a bit of a sp Obviously, we'll see a spot in the US dollar, which will see the Aussie um, head up or down, depending where that comes. So it's really data dependent. And, and it's difficult to say with so many factors and these um, events out of the blue, such as the banking crisis. But at the moment, it's looking pretty happy between 66 and 68. I think it'll take a bit of a catalyst to break that range, mm. um, whether above or below. And Lachlan, how's the Kiwi travelling at the moment? Of course, the RBNZ also considering its next move in rates. It is somewhat ahead of Australia, of course, in that regard, uh, having been one of the more aggressive central banks. Uh, but a bit to consider there in New Zealand off the back of some recent natural disasters, which, of course, is going to have a short-term bump just as far as inflation is concerned. So they're trying to factor that in at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's similar forces um, with the Aussie and the, and the Kiwi dollar. I mean, it's, it's you get these little spikes here and there on CPIs and, and the central bank, but it's, again, the general market kind of 
uh, conditions will be the real driving forces of them. And you see that in the um, the, rate, the Aussie Kiwi, which you know spiked down a little bit yesterday on the, on the uh, week Aussie CPI, but came straight back. And, and anything under 107 really at the moment, it's a, it's a good buy on that pair. Um, the RBNZ, as you said, has been really aggressive, and, and I'm surprised next week looking at um, what the market's pricing in. We've got a 25, pretty much a done deal, and it's actually pricing a little bit more than that. So um, with their employment um, and their, their shock of a GDP recently, their employment and their retail sales lately haven't been great. So that's that's a central bank meeting where I could see a downside surprise, where they, you do get the hike, but a dovish hike. Mm. So next week, I think we might get a, a, a hawkish pause from the RBA and a dovish <laughs> hike from the RBNZ. So... Um, yeah, I'll certainly be buying any dips in the Aussie Kiwi under 107, I think. Interesting times. Um, Lachlan, uh, what are you seeing um, in Europe at the moment? Um, of course, with the ECB sticking to its guns, it did lift again. Obviously, still trying to get inflation um, uh, under control there, despite what they're seeing in the banking sector. How's that travelling? Yeah, the ECB's handled this banking crisis, I think, uh, much more confidently than the Fed seems to have. They've They've really um, assured the market they've got things under control. They've been full steam ahead of, with their hawkish rec- rhetoric, getting inflation under control. Uh, I think this is really bullish for the euro against the US dollar. I can see it certainly testing that 110 level, which is the 2023 highs uh, in the not too distant future, unless, as we said before, the Fed starts taking back that hawkish rhetoric. Um, and and along with them, the uh, the UK as well. They've, I think their governor was out a couple of days ago who was relatively hawkish as well, speaking up inflation. So I think the pound and the euro is certainly looking in a, a bullish position against the US dollar. The, the pound may see that 125, 2023 high as well. Um, but if I had to trade one against the other, I'd probably be buying the euro against the pound. I think um, the market's probably a little bit too aggressive in what they're expecting from the Bank of England. But um, the the euro, the Europeans don't seem to be mucking around and, and, and being behind the curve, that policy differential when they when they keep hiking and, and say the US pauses um, could be a real real tailwind as well for the euro.